So the final topic I'll touch on before I hand over to, to Sophia is um, uncertainty. So typically, when people want to find out something about the world, say you want to find out something, a certain characteristic of the UK population, it's very rare that you'd be able to measure every particular person, and actually sometimes just unnecessary to measure every particular person in that population. You would draw a sample from it. But because it's a sample, you may luck out or luck in or whatever. You might be a little bit unlucky and get a relatively unusual sample just by just chance error, just, just, just chance occurrence. So as a result of that, the estimates that, say, surveys make, for example, many official estimates, are, have, have a, a doubt and uncertainty associated with them, which arises from the fact that they don't necessarily make, they make an inference about a bigger thing, they're just looking at a little bit of it, because that's all they can look at. You can't possibly, um, very rarely can you measure everyone. That sometimes, that uncertainty, annoying as it is, as possibly part of the reason it does get lost in the wash, but it often does get uh, lost out of certain stories, which then lose their piquancy, which when you realize that actually it, it, it really, something that seems like a headline actually could be, it, 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 nothing may have happened is the less, um, is, is the less uh, uh, sexy headline. So here's, here's a, an example. Um, from the BBC website, the number of people out of work rose by 38,000 to 2.49 million in the three months to June, official figures show. However, as Ben Goldacre, as you've probably encountered him before in one of his blogs or columns, noted the estimated change over that past quarter was indeed 38,000. But the extent of the uncertainty, they, they, they quantified the uncertainty as best they could using these 95% confidence intervals, included the, 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 very, the very real possibility that nothing happened. So you got this um, confidence interval running from, uh, so it's plus or minus 87,000, running from minus 49,000 to 125,000. So very comfortably includes the possibility, very, that nothing happened, it, it includes zero. So the less, um, the less interesting headline would be nothing might have happened, and possibly the, more, the, more, the, the headline which would do better justice to uh, that particular statistic. But that's like you're saying to your editor, actually there's no story here. It is. You're saying to the neighbor like, <laughs> rubbish. Um, that's, like, that's not journalism. Well, that's, that's, that's a very interesting point. So, yeah. so that's the, I suspect that's the tension. There's, there's a story of Labour being a positive number. That's a story of being a positive number. It's a difficult I mean, story to headline, that one. <laughs> it's it's what, like sorry? a difficult story to headline, because politicians always make up stats, right? So, so Labour hike unemployment when actually it's a little bit of a Yeah, maybe that's, that's a wrong <laughs> I'm very aware of the fact I'm speaking as someone from, from a research academic background, so I don't typically um, have the sorts of tensions and, and pressures and competing demands that someone working in the journalistic uh, area would have. So that's a very good point in that you may be pulled one way or the other to do. I mean, yeah, that, that's, I think that's a very interesting discussion point. So another example, um, actually, this is, this is uh, there's, there's two little problems in this. Daily Mail reported that bailiffs have been called in to take back um, goods of value from uh, people who um, uh, the people who fraudulently claim benefits. And the springboard to this story was an alleged increase in the uh, amount of benefits fraudulently claimed. Actually, they got that wrong. So it didn't, the amount of benefits fraudulently claimed, as you can see, of this particular, um, from, from this year to this year, which is what they're reporting, uh, actually didn't change. They, they misinterpreted the figures. It, they, they, were, they were compared, with, they, produced, they, they, they put error in there as well. So benefits that were issued 
mistakenly, not, not to do a fraud, just because there's presumably some sort of administrative error. That's what they're reporting. Um, they, got that, they got that wrong. But even if they got it right, um, the, the, the difference that they reporting in, the, in the, the, the fine detail of the article here, which you probably can't see, but um, it says here that uh, there was a 100, pound, uh, 100 million pound uh, increase in um, fraudulent benefits uh, uh, being issued, even if that were the case, which it wasn't, but even if it were, again, very comfortably fall within um, these relatively wide uh, confidence intervals. So essentially what, what, what these, of course, are saying is that that's our best estimate of what that particular figure is, but where uncertain to, 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 to this extent um, is a more technical definition of that particular 95% confidence interval. But essentially, the take-home message is the wider it is, the less certain they are about the integrity of that um, about whether that estimate is a, a true description of what they're trying to describe in the wider world. I'll pass on to Sophia, but before I do, are there any, and I do apologize for rattling through a few of those, I know it's very, very quick. Any particular questions at the moment? Do you seriously expect the Daily Mail to tell the truth? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't. I really, uh, I, I don't. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's. As I suggested before, I think it's. It's, it's um, an interesting discussion point. Yeah. Um, <coughs> it might be uh, worth me just uh, interjecting here. I was the speaker for this morning's session, which was much more biased towards a sort of journalistic audience. So <coughs> unfortunately, you weren't there for that. Uh, but I specifically dealt with this issue that you are not hired as journalists to make a judgment about the quality of the science and the quality of the statistics, right? You are there, you are hired to report stories as they are presented. So there's a tension there in terms of what, what you've got to achieve. So the, the approach that we think is possible, and I speak as someone who's worked for 30 years for firstly with the Times, then with the Sunday Telegraph, as well as having an academic career, so I, I feel the tension in both directions is that you can, by knowing that there's something fishy about these statistics, you know that you can't go to your news zone and say, oh, well, yeah, I looked at these, I think they suck, I think it's rubbish, so I don't think we should cover it. Next day, Daily Mail covers it, you get your ass kicked, not to put too fine a point on it. So you have to find some way of squaring that circle. The way I used to do it, and the way I think can be done in general, is that as a result of going on these courses, you get a sense for what questions need to be asked. And also, you know what? I think what we've got here is, say, a case of regression to the mean, which is something we'll be talking about later on this afternoon. And you just put this in about paragraph six to nine in the story. You do the story anyway, right? And then basically you leave it up to the news editor or whatever senior editor is going to deal with it if they're going to include these caveats. You've covered your back in terms of reporting on the story because the Daily Mail will pick up on some of these stories but also you've covered off the scepticism like you you can ring up one of the experts to say but a leading expert on, for, on these statistics from the London School of Economics said that there were severe doubts about it. It could indeed be a separate story like a box to run in a, in a news story with this type of thing about the whole question of the uncertainty. And then you've got extra, you've got an extra story from it. So I think it is possible to square the circle, but you know, I, I know exactly what you people, what, what the pressures you're under, which is if you make a decision and say, well, this isn't even my best, it doesn't meet my criteria for good science or, or good economics, you will be gone by the end of the week and replaced with an intern. So that is the nature of our job. So we have to square that circle, and I think that's one way of doing it.